Slide it over. Okay. Okay, so we're live right now. We're gonna. Uh, this is Prolific the Rapper. He's gonna introduce uh, himself and tell us what video we're watching right now. We're watching the video. Okay. The incident last night that occurred out on the bridge. Thought about about six o'clock last night. We received some information that there were uh, numerous uh, protesters that were up on the bridge and uh, acting uh, very uh, aggressively. Uh, towards uh, the officers. Yeah. So what's happening is three weeks now they said they're going to clear this bridge. They say they have the blockade here for our safety because the bridge is unsafe. The bridge is unsafe, the blockade should be on the side. They didn't uphold their end of the deal, we cleared the bridge. Several explosions that were, I know one for sure, that was that was on the, the, the south side of the bridge. Uh, we're not sure where that, that came from. You can see where it came from. Was anyone posing crazy. any threats to them? Was anyone crossing the barbed wire or the barricade oh, at that no, time? Not at all. The number one thing has still been uh, the safety, the safety for, for everybody. And uh, some of the uh, the actions that were uh, taken last night uh, were, were just for that purpose uh, uh, alone. Uh, on the bridge, I think what, what, they, what she described was there was a truck on the bridge and the police kind of intentionally left that truck on the bridge so that Ambulances couldn't get back and forth and <coughs> drive and get in and out of the, of the area. So not only are they people are getting intentionally hurt, but they can't get the kind of medical service that they need in a timely fashion. Um, could you tell us why the vehicles are s still on the bridge? The uh, vehicles. Well, the vehicles are there just because of the, the safety. The you know everything since the, the October twenty seventh uh, and the fire on the bridge that this. The bridge is still not safe. It has never been deemed to be safe by the Department of Transportation. And part of Sophia's prognosis is harmed by the fact that it took eight hours, six to eight hours, before she could actually have surgery. And time is of the essence, and they like to have this surgery happen within a few hours. So that's very, very upsetting that they still leave that truck there on the bridge and not letting ambulances come in and out of the, uh, of the site. It's a human rights violation, as far as I can see. What was she hit with? She was hit with a grenade. This is a little bit what we picked up from the barricade. We got an instantaneous blast, one that's already been blasted, and we have a full one that they pulled the pin and they didn't even cut the tape. That's an act of terrorism right there. Basically, they said this was just, uh, they were very aggressive. In, uh, in their actions of what they were, were doing. You described it a little bit, but uh, they were trying to figure out a way of getting the car off the bridge so that ambulances could get in and out. Uh, and they were shot with these high pressure water cannons and 20 degree temperature. <laughs> She's got bullet wounds all over her body, um, rubber bullets, or you know, plastic bullets, less than lethal, but you can maim somebody. The police officers apparently were shooting directly at people's faces and trying to hit the men in the groin. Um, Sophia was hit in the groin, but she was dressed in such a manner you couldn't really tell if she was a man or a woman, but they were intentionally trying to hit 
men in crime with the bullets. Um, and they threw a grenade right at her. Mm -hmm. the grenade exploded right in her arm. Um, I witnessed the uh, gal getting hit with a concussion grenade. She was uh, flinching from it after being hit directly. And within seconds, it had blown up or shattered right in front of her. And the shrapnel, you could see like the, the clothes just ripple from her. You could see like her arm kind of tense out. And uh, from there, I, I tensed up. I was already going through shock and hypothermia myself. And I, I didn't know how to maintain that type of stress. It was very traumatic. I haven't been able to deal with this since. What else has she told you? What else has she told me? I mean, she's told me that the police are trying to hurt people. They're not trying to control the situation. They're not trying to arrest people. They're trying to hurt people. Intentionally, purposefully, for people. They're doing things that they don't care. Someone could die easily. Officer in that situation to, to make sure that things stay safe. Everybody is uh, reacting, you know, to uh, uh, we use very good uh, control and restraint uh, for the things that were uh, being thrown uh, at the officers at the time. What steps are you planning to take in response to this? I don't know yet. I, mean, I, 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 I made a complaint to the FBI last night. Um, one of, I've, I've talked to the Justice Department investigation. I certainly plan on uh, having all of her clothing tested. There was some news reporting out there that was false, that the protesters attacked her, you know, accidentally, some propane, but that's just nonsensical reporting. Um, that the surgeon said he pulled shrapnel out of her arm so it's pretty clear that there was a grenade that, that caused this and not something else not propane fire as the morton chief morton, morton county chief said so uh you know i'm going to take every possible step that i can and uh you know it's now my fight too <laughs> so i'm going to do everything i can to pop support the cause that she believes so strongly in. what was it like to get that call Chief or Sheriff, there's uh, reports of people hospitalized or checked into admitted to hospitals locally. You guys we, don't, we don't have any reports of that. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm a medic here at the Chitty Squam Maine Medic Tent. Uh, last night at the action, there were a lot of traumatic injuries that had to be transported to the hospital. Our guess right now is anywhere from 20 to 30. Um, some of them were very severe. There were a lot of head traumas and body traumas from the rubber bullets. Um, it looked like the police were actually trying to target heads and uh, lower body. We had an awful lot of leg injuries and um, arm injuries. There were a lot of people we had to be transported. We are still today seeing residual effects from contusions to um, that are pretty severe to a lot of respiratory and a lot of ear problems from the um, flashbangs and percussion um, grenades that were going off. We did have a gentleman that had a cardiac um, episode twice and I treated him. We had one seizure and um, I was on scene for that. It was very traumatic. Um, we had a mass casualty incident which even the Standing Rock and the some of the Bismarck EMS that were here that were phenomenal and stood by us and helped, they said that they had never seen anything like this and they did not realize that this was what it was like when Morton County unleashed on us. So they were not aware of the injuries that were happening. They were just seeing the few, but last night by far was, I, I'm pretty sure the, the worst it had been and we transported more patients than we ever had. There's one thing you would like Morton County to know, what would that be? Stop being stupid. There's no sense in what you're doing. Peaceful, prayerful people.
even if they're yelling and screaming, they're not shooting, they're not hurting you, they're there protecting the water, just stop. What you're doing is beyond wrong. You're violating civil rights, you're violating international laws, you're just, you've lost control. So that was a video with uh, from Prolific. He's been uh, a great. Uh, <laughs> He's been doing a great job at bringing information to a lot of the individuals out there. I mean, to the public, of course, as the media. Um, but um, I want to get some input uh, uh, on a video that we just that we just watched. And the uh, first individual that I'd like to talk to, his name is uh, Pat Kincane. Kincane. And um, he's a inherent, inherent, Pat, help me out. <laughs> inherent right legals consultant. So uh, we're gonna go to him right now. He's uh, he's live at the desk. Sorry, 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 Pat. I'm putting you on the spot. Ready? There we go. So we go to Pat. As a disabled combat veteran. I, I can't even comment on what I just saw, so I apologize. I have to catch my composure. I don't even know how you deal with that, you know, other than you put that chief of police in jail, and that's too good for him. Sorry, I can't even comment on it. It's just a total mistreatment to our people. Not a, not just to our people, but to people as a human being. And I mean, your 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 heart is expressing it definitely. And I'm sure all of us in this room have a feeling that same. And. Uh, it's, it's just a mistreatment for sure. And you don't have to comment on it. I mean, because you, your energy says it all, you know? And why do why do we as American citizens and why do we as, as human beings and why do our, 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 our combat veterans have to experience this? It's like, it's, like, it's just a re, it's, it's it, it's sad that we have to reawaken this 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 feeling of darkness that we that we experienced as veterans you know in Iraq or or in the Middle East or anywhere for that matter but um but I, i'm i'm just i apologize to you for 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 having to bring that up and, and we should we shouldn't have to deal with that as American citizens, because that's what that's what we fight for. 
our, our freedoms. We fight for that constitutional, our constitutional rights. We fight for our sovereignty as indigenous people. Those are the things that we fight for. But sometimes, you know, that, that thought that we're also fighting for, for not only our, that constitution and those, those other rights, but we're also fighting for our politicians and, 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 and their personal agendas our leaders' personal agendas, and I don't know if that happens in, within our tribes, but I'm sorry, Pat, you know, for, for bringing that out, because it hurts, it hurts. <coughs> but, um, you know, we have uh, other individuals in this room with us, and I want to know if they're okay with it. I want them to share what they just saw, because that affects us all. Long term, short term, whatever, it affects us. So, um, if it's okay, you wanna, if you want to speak. Sure. Our brother here, <coughs> and introduce himself. My name is Dallin Maybe. I'm Northern Arapaho and Seneca. Um, I have a JD in, in Indian law. Um, I'm a former law enforcement officer. I worked for a tribe on the Utah Nevada border for a little while. I, I actually attended uh, BIA's basic police academy down in New Artesia, New Mexico. And um, what's really disheartening is to see the way in which uh, the cops have a narrative here about how they felt threatened, how they felt like their actions were justified by uh, what was happening on the bridge that day. Uh, I do take heart knowing that people are recording that 20 years ago this wouldn't have even been an issue because people you know had their their voice against somebody else's voice in, a, in, a, in power and in authority but now we have uh, competing narratives but now you have video you have testimony that will uh, hopefully uh, validate one one narrative over the false and deceitful narratives of another um, as a law enforcement officer you you are trained to meet force with like force you just can't uh, put people's lives in danger unless you really believe that your life is in danger. I didn't see any protesters spraying down the cops with water hoses. I didn't see protesters shooting rubber bullets across those lines. I didn't even see protesters trying to cross those lines. Protesters have every right under the First Amendment to sit and yell and disagree with whatever the hell they want frankly. Um, and that's part of the reason why veterans have come to support this effort, uh, because they recognize that there, there are not just inherent tribal sovereignty rights that, that, that are guaranteed to us, but there are just simply, I'll say it again, human, humanity rights, rights that we have, w whatever color, whatever race we are, uh, in order to make ourselves heard. And that's, what, and that's why they're here. That's why they wanted to support this cause. So one part of me, as a former law enforcement officer, you know, I, I know what it's like to, to be the hated guy, to try and protect the community first over the interests of a, of a few people who may want to harm the community. <coughs> and I just can't find any justification for what happened on the bridge that day. Uh, I, I consider law enforcement officers, some of them are my brothers, you know, they're, they're good guys, they're, they really do have the interests of their community at heart, they want to serve, they want to get to know the people that are around them in order to protect them, um, but even brothers have disagreements sometimes, and, and so when I see a, a video like this, it's hard for me to think about my experiences and my training and say that somehow the claims that they were making were justified with, for the actions that they committed that day. Um, 
you know, justice requires accountability and videos like this will, will help bring that accountability about. Um, you know, I, I know that nobody pays attention to, to, to sometimes protests or actions until somebody suffers, until somebody has to experience brutality. You know, I, I think our cultures teach us that <clears throat> you, you live your life in a, in a prayerful way. You know, our Sundance has certain protocols that teach us how to live our lives and how to, how to view our value structures. Um, and a lot of that comes about by recognizing that, that suffering is a form of powerful prayer. And so I, I've been impressed with how many people have come here despite the weather, despite the brutality, in order to lend their prayers and lend their strength. And, and whether they recognize it or not, their suffering is, is going to lend power to this, to this place, to this protest. And um, my biggest fear, one of the reasons I returned here this week was because I, I could see the situation devolving into two eventualities. One, that required more suffering, more people who were just simply willing to add that power to their prayer, or um, the pipeline would be stopped. And with this weird sort of gray area, um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of effective uh, steps the tribe can take to, to show that this is a sacred place, that there are uh, locations within this area that um, those things need to be considered and that this pipeline should not be here at all. There's, there's other considerations that should take precedence over the consideration of, of money. Um, and that's what I, where I think the, the, uh, the fight is going to move. So I, you know, I applaud Prolific for taking the time and using his talents to put together these, these videos. Um, because unless you're here, unless you've seen it, <coughs> uh, you know, there's no other way to experience that. And it impacts people in different ways.